you're getting into singles action with Greg the Hammer Valentine, third from the top in the Charlotte Coliseum. Uh, this was a big show in the territory, and Greg was a very well-established star during this period. Yeah. As we mentioned, you've been kind of relegated to tag team wrestling up to this point for the most yeah. part. Uh, this has got to feel like an opportunity to kind of prove yourself as a singles worker. Yeah, right? I did, man. It was real important to me to go out there and have a great match with Greg, and we did. We went out and did about 20, 25 minutes. Wow. And uh, we got our shit in, you know, and I showed them that I could, could carry it. Because I hated tag teams. I just hated them. <laughs> now, was there anybody that you would tag team with? Not no. even necessarily here, but over the course of your career no. that you enjoyed? Nobody. No. No. <laughs> Hell no. Fuck no. <laughs> Not even like The Undertaker later on. No, the I don't know. You just can't tell your story that way, right? No, I couldn't. As soon as I got it established, they'd go in and fuck it up. <laughs> I mean, it's there's something to be said there because two guys n not on the same page. Like, look, uh, a lot of guys made tag team wrestling like a main event. Like, I'm thinking, oh, of yeah, Arn and Tully. Some guys were great at it because they were yeah. always on the same page. But you, you're just kind of an outside the box thinker, and maybe it didn't quite work that well with somebody, right? It didn't work for me, man. Never now, did. Valentine has a reputation of being a legitimate tough guy in the business. Uh, was that your experience around Greg? Did you get that? Oh, right? yeah. He was a stiffy. Out there, he was a little rough. Oh, yeah. Guy. Oh, yeah. It's like he dropped that elbow on him. That was his big thing, right? Yeah. He didn't hit you with the elbow. He hit you with his whole fucking lap. <laughs> you know, he crushed your fucking chest, man. He knocked the air out of you. He didn't, oh. he didn't mind taking it. You know, if he, if he tatered you, he was willing to take one back. I know because I gave him a bunch of them. So, like, are you working the same way? Because you and I have talked about you stepping into the ring with guys who are a little bit stiff or a little bit rough out yeah. there, and, you, and you're not afraid to give it back to them. Yeah. Generally speaking, is you, what's your mode? Are you kind of on the snug side, or do you snug. go light? Yeah. Snug. But you'll go a little bit harder if you got a guy like Greg who's really. Oh God, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. He gets three notches up. Now, well, other, it... other words, my hands will be sore at the end of the match. <laughs> now, has it ever happened that somebody's come at you a little too rough, and you got to give them the old like, "Hey, slow it down" or "back off" sort of thing? Oh yeah, Macho Man. Okay. Yeah, you know, he would come at you a million miles an hour, man. Would he listen when you'd ask him to back off? No. <laughs> so I just grab a hold of him and let him go. So you let grab him, him and blow him up? Blow him up. Then after he was blown up, I could do anything I wanted. <laughs> now, uh, Greg's ring style, obviously pretty snug. Is there any other like descriptors that you would put in there for him? He, he's not like a technical guy. He's, he's more just no. like you go out there and kind of push you no, around. He, he's very slow. He's very just grind it out. Take you to the, take you right to the edge and pull you back in, man. You know it was very solid. It was very believable, uh, and everything meant something. Everything meant something. No wasted motion, kind of a no, guy. No, not at all. Um, so Greg is a veteran among the two of you, but I know that you like to call matches and paint the picture for the audience yourself. Under those circumstances, do you just bite your tongue and follow his lead? No, I called it. Did you really? Yeah. The, you know, this whole calling matches stuff, it's come up here on the podcast a few times just because like, to me as an outsider, I'm just like, how do you know when, like, is, is he going to get offended if you go out there and start calling spots or how does it work? No, he didn't mind. Okay, so you're able to just go out there and start doing it, and he's like, yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not like you were some rookie either. You'd certainly no. put in some years, and we're, we're ready for it. Yeah, I was. Um, a lot of people say that Greg has always got a full gas tank and would keep coming and coming, even getting stronger as the match went on. Was that your experience with him? Absolutely. He just kept that, kept that train coming, man. Chug, 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 chug. And it didn't, you can't stop the train. It's going to come, it's going to come to you, you know? So you better get out of the fucking way. 
Now, uh, the other guy I hear that about all the time is Steve Austin. Uh, would you mm. say that those two have pretty similar styles in that regard? Yeah, in that regard, yeah. Okay, aside from Steve that, not, come in, yeah. not too much alike. No. Uh, you ever go partying with Greg? I know that he was no stranger to the party scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did any, anything jump out? No, I can't remember. <laughs> well, it sounds like it must have been a good night. I, I plead the fifth. <laughs> That's probably the safer route. Yeah.